Good morning, church family. It's Monday, August the 3rd, and I want to thank you for tuning us in to work through our devotion for today from the Our Daily Bread devotion book. Today's devotion is titled, The Battle's Over, Really. It's from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Let me read that for you. Here's what the Apostle Paul says, moved by the Holy Spirit, beginning at verse 1. He says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So the Apostle Paul, over and over again in those 11 verses, he makes a contrast between death and life, old self, new self, the man who is doomed by sin versus the man who has been set free through the work of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. So the the devotion's titled, The Battle's Over, Really. And it tells a, an interesting story, and, and maybe this will be the first time you've heard this story, but it's absolutely fascinating. It says, for 29 years after World War II ended, Hiro Onada hid in the jungle, refusing to believe his country had surrendered. Japanese military leaders had dispatched Onada to a remote island in the Philippines with orders to spy on the Allied forces. Long after a peace treaty had been signed and hostilities ceased, Onada remained in the wilderness. In 1974, Onada's commanding officer traveled to the island to find him and convince him the war was over. For three decades, Onada lived a meager, isolated existence because he refused to surrender, refused to believe the conflict was done. We can make a similar mistake. Paul proclaims the stunning truth that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. On the cross, in a powerful, mysterious way, Jesus put to death Satan's lies, death's terror, and sin's tenacious grip. Though we're dead to sin and alive to God, we often live as though evil still holds the power. We yield to temptation, succumbing to sin's seduction, We listen to lies, failing to trust Jesus. But we don't have to yield. We don't have to live in a false narrative. By God's grace, we can embrace the true story of Christ's victory. While we still wrestle with sin, liberation comes as we recognize that Jesus has already won the battle. May we live out that truth in his power. Man, that is, a, that is such a life-changing revelation. When we really begin to live our lives from the stance of victory, the victory that's already ours in Christ Jesus, then we really know what real freedom is. In my years as a Christian and now my years as a, a pastor, I've watched scores and scores and scores of Christians who have who have been given assurance of eternal abundant life in Christ Jesus be so mired down in yielding, fail to live victoriously, uh, always doubting and, and holding suspect 
the work that Jesus did on the cross. And, and because of that, they never really have true life-giving victory. I know that for me in my life, every day that, that I really consider and I really live out the victory that Jesus has given me, the fact that when he came back to life in the tomb, I too come back to life. When, when, when I live out the truth that death has no sting over my life, then and only then do I have what he promised to me in John 10, 10. Remember what he said. He said, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Oh, my friends, only if we would live out that truth that Jesus has come to give us life and life abundantly. I heard the story of these Japanese soldiers that hid in the, in the caves of the Philippine Islands for decades after the end of World War II. I heard that story years ago, and it has always boggled my mind. How in the world could they continue to live um, so, so completely separated from reality? I mean, the war had been over. For decades, the war had been over, and yet they, they continued to live totally isolated from the truth. But you know, that's true for many of us spiritually. Jesus has given us victory, the war has been fought, and the war has been won, but we continue to live as though we're still prisoners. And today, my hope is that for all of us, everyone that hears this message today, that you might live victoriously. Jesus is the victor. He has won the battle, and we are his, and he is ours. And so today, we are also partakers of the resurrection. And that is such amazing news, such amazing news. I hope that today you have a victorious day, that, that you'll live out your life knowing that you have the victory and it's assured to you if your faith and trust is in Christ Jesus. I love you. Have a good day. I will look forward to seeing you back here Wednesday morning.